three easy steps to change the world. One, be extraordinary. Two, do something great. And three, change the world. If you can't tell that it's not true, that's no three easy steps to change the world. And if you're looking at me to explain, well, I can't really do that. I'm not extraordinary. My brother tells me that every day. <laughs> do something great, very subjective, and change the world. I can guarantee you haven't changed the world yet, because if I did, you probably couldn't afford to see me talk. <laughs> so I'll tell you the right steps to change the world. Easy, 214 steps to change the world. <laughs> and I'll be spending a couple minutes on each. Maybe just on step number one for now. I'm going to spend this talk talking about step number one, taking action. The step that I took, well, from just a baby to where I am today, where we work to build a robot that brings technology to the miner uh, to help them clear landmines safer and faster than ever. And we gain local, national, and international media because of our work. I'll tell you the tricks to step number one. The tricks to start and keep taking action. Now, work ethic, passion, and accountability. So the journey starts when I was seven years old. I started my first business selling stickers. I would find stickers around the house, some from my brothers. I would take it to school and would sell them, get the money, purchase more in bulk, and then sell those stickers. I keep doing that cycle. I was determined because at that time, I only want one thing at that time, which is to get that money and buy a chick to play with. No. <laughs> Not the type of chick you're thinking about. This. <laughs> Baby chicken, because back in 1999 in Cambodia, this is the trend toy that everyone was playing with. And I didn't know how inhumane that was. Um, <laughs> so you can't blame seven years old Richard for that. <laughs> but I work hard. I, I enjoy doing it. But what it means is that I need to spend a lot of time cutting up those stickers, packing them up nicely, and then take it to school to sell. Which means I need to get up very early to finish all my schoolwork, because in Cambodia, if you don't finish your schoolwork, the teacher will discipline you a little bit more than just words. <laughs> so my day would begin at 5 AM, doing my schoolwork, doing a little bit of my sticker business, and then head to school, because for my school, during the break and after school, is when it's perfect time to sell. I save up some money. The business was doing very well, so I rec recruited a couple of my friends. The sticker umpire was under my graph. I can see it. <laughs> well, there were some competitors coming into the business, but we eliminated them by undercut the price. <laughs> we lost some revenue, but those seven years old stood no chance against us. until the marble business coming into town. And then <laughs> we realized we're in trouble. We need to expand our inventory. But we have a low cash on hand due to the leadership team inability to resist Candy and Pepsi. <laughs> but nonetheless, as a founder, I need to fix it. So as any seven years old in Cambodia can tell you the most logical thing to get money it's to get a job. And I was, no, I did not work at a sweatshop. Uh, I was very lucky to be able to work at a local family clinic, packing pills and greeting patients. But it, what it meant is that my days as a seven years old just got a lot more busier. Five to seven, school work and doing sticker business, 7 to 11, class time, 11 to 1, lunch, and Power Rangers, 1 to 5, <laughs> class time and extra play time, 5 to 7, working at the clinic, 7 to 9, dinner, and if I'm lucky, Tom and Jerry. 
But I didn't mind because at that time, I only dreamt of having the chick soft touch on my cheek anyway. <laughs> and I learned how to develop good work ethic because of that. And I learned how important to have a good work ethic. And I learned that baby chick can only survive one and a half days without food. And our sticker umpire collapsed when the Pokemon card came into town anyway. So, <laughs> A few years after that, I've learned about the second factor, passion. Our family went through a little bit of a hard time, so my dad has to move to the border of Thailand, Cambodia, at a town called Poi Pai. It's a 400 kilometer away from the capital city that I lived in, 400 kilometer that take 14 to 16 hours due to the road condition and also because the trip itself was very dangerous. But I didn't care when I go to visit him. Well, I got to see my dad. Um, but also I got to go to my favorite playground, the local market. Me and my brother and my cousin, we would play in the local market and then during lunch, we would eat lunch with my aunts and her family and then we continue playing. And if you're wondering, Richard, why do you play in the local market? Well, audience, let me tell you why. Because in Poi Pai, in 1999, or a few years after that, in Cambodia, landmine was a big issue. The idea of having your kids running around in the field sounds absurd over there. This is the safest place for us to play. And I was fine with it. My dad would increase my allowance to 500 Cambodian currency which is about 15 cents. <laughs> and at night when we get tired, we would sleep right in the market on a spot 10 feet by 10 feet. That was my life. I was happy. And you might say, Richard, because you live in a country at a time, at a place that landmine issue was so substantial that you could see the effect having on people. You could see victims lining up on the street asking for food and money. That that is the reason that you develop passion to solve landmine. No. I did not develop passion to solve landmine because of that. I was desensitized to it. I grew up in that environment. When you grew up in the darkness, you don't crave the light. Looking back, I feel ashamed. Because I accepted the way it is. I accepted that. I don't have to be able to walk anywhere I want. I accepted that some people have to live without limbs. Until, until, until my aunt passed because she stepped on a landmine. She, she was clearing her land to grow vegetable. And when the accident happened, my dad was doing the same thing on his land right beside her. It could have been him. I was angry. I was angry. I was confused. And I feel the great passion and fire growing inside me. I, I never wanted to do anything more in my life. I never want to fix anything more. That is when the day that I know what the word passion means to me. But they, Weeks, months, years pass, and passion fades, just like everything else with time. I have that passion, but it didn't lead me to anything. Passion is a double-edged sword. When you have passion and a fire, you feel like you can put the world in your palm of your hand and lift it. But when it's gone, when it's faded, taking the next step seems impossible. Like taking a leap over a mountain. When I was 13, I moved to Canada with my mom and my older brother. I didn't know then that stepping off that plane, my life was about to be changed forever. Everything that I know and feel comfortable with was stripped and taken away from me. My first day of school it was the scariest experience of my life. The school, the school secretary look at me, she tell me what to do and where to go, and I look at her, stare blankly 
partly because I was afraid, nervous, and worried, and sad, and partly because I have no freaking clue what she's talking about. <laughs> I don't really speak English. I hate school. I hate my life. And I hate everything that happened then. For the first time in my life, I could go anywhere I want, play anywhere I want. For the first time in my life, I have an actual playground to play in, and I hate it. My strategy of copying everything down from the blackboard and then translate it word by word didn't help my education. I have to go to school every day cleaning up garbage from my locker that were put by my new classmate because I was different. I want to go back to Cambodia. I want to run away every day. And I want to blame this feeling on anyone and everyone around me. I don't want to be the person accountable for the anger and the sadness in my life. I want to blame my dad for not being here with me. I want to blame my brother for not helping me throughout my problem. And I want to blame my mom for bringing me here. But I can't. My dad is trying to survive in Cambodia. My brother, going through the same thing as I am, if not worse, because he was placed in high school while I was just in middle school, and my mom. I can never blame my mom, the person that sacrificed the most for me. She gave up her career as a doctor to move here and work as a labor worker, working 10, 20 hours or overtime a week just to make it comfortable for us. I learned how to grow up fast. I learned how to adapt to the new culture and language, and I learned what it meant the word accountability. Because I tell myself every day that I am the person accountable for my success, failure, and feeling. And it pays off. By the end of the school year, I was awarded the English certificate representing my graduating class in English. By the end of high school, I was top five in mathematics and represent my school at the Harvard MIT math tournament. So it took me 10 years to learn and understand the three factors behind step number one, taking action. But I never put them together very well until I started Land My Boys. Land My Boys is a passion project that I am accountable for success and failure, which will rely on my work ethic. We never fool ourselves and tell that we only need passion to make this a success. We can never trust and rely on passion alone to push us to work our hardest every day. We try our best to make sure we have a strong work ethic, that we are accountable for what we do, and couple that with passion. Follow your passion, but never let it dictate your work ethic. Passion is just an ignition to your car. To reach your destination, you need, you need to put the foot on the gas and steer your way through traffic and distraction. And you are accountable to get that. Keep yourself grounded and accountable. In fact, let others help you keep yourself accountable. Surround yourself by mentors that hold you to your word. And you must be accountable for what you said and what you told your user and your customer. I am accountable for giving hope to the miner that one day they can go to work knowing they will come home for dinner. I am accountable for giving hope to children that they can walk to school safely every day. I am accountable for giving hope and promise that we will take landmine out of the ground before it can take limbs from children. And to those that we cannot help by going back in time and remove the landmine that they stepped it on. That smile, tears, and fears etch into my brain and heart. And every day, it reminds me to strengthening my work ethic and fuel my passion.
stone for you to start taking step number one, you need to understand all the factors behind it. Work ethic, passion, accountability, and you. Because no matter how well you know and learn about those three factors, no matter how many times you watch this talk or any other talk, unless you get up and start taking action and get up and take that first step, nothing will change. Thank you.